Good morning. Um, good morning from Reed Magin. Uh, today we have again uh, Rudy Bischenbach. He's a, a very good friend of uh, the Reed Magin community. Every year he has presented his uh, wonderful information on the market of ebooks. And uh, we are glad to welcome him again. And I will give the floor to Jose Manuel Anta. But before, I would like to remind you that uh, you can use the uh, questions uh, panel on the SwapCat application, and you can also use the chat. So we will start the things from, from now, right now. Uh, Jose Manuel, please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Luis. Thank you, everyone. to. Uh to participate at this session on Ritmagin. Uh, I would like to thank especially to Mr. Rudiger Bischenbar, a good friend of, of all of us and a collaborator uh, with, uh, with this event almost from the beginning. Uh, Rudiger uh, develops uh, from several years uh, the Digital Consumer Group Barometer that is a project that has the support of uh, some of the main digital distributors around the world, uh, including the association, the IPDA, the International Publishing Distributors Association, that is also partner of the project. So we are very proud of, of, of this uh, collaboration with uh, Vision Bar Consulting. And uh, well, we have the exclusive today uh, of the new data of this barometer. So more than happy to be here, more than happy that uh, Rudiger will be with us. So uh, Rudiger, with your time, the floor is yours. Thank you again. Thank you, Jose Manuel, and thank you, Luis, so much for the kind introduction. I'm very happy to be in Madrid right now. No, I'm not in Madrid. Uh, and I keep the suspense also with regard to the impact of the COVID-19 uh, crisis on publishing, because I will start first by running you through findings that mostly focus on 2019, digital publications, ebooks, audiobooks, streamings, download sales in a half dozen number of <clears throat> in a half dozen um, markets from both Europe and the Americas in order to understand where we stand with the digital transformation. And then on that foundation, we will be able to find out about some very first. Um, um, impact on the um, of the of the virus uh, situation. So the digital consumer book barometer, which we started two years ago in 2018, is based on real sales data provided by digital distributors, Bookwire, Demark, Libranda, a digital Readbox, and Ingram. And it's covering uh, Canada, the Franco, uh, French speaking part of Canada, Germany, Italy, Spain, Mexico, and Brazil, a wide array of markets. But the real specificity is um, that it is uh, not anymore looking at formats. Remember when ebooks started to have a meaningful presence in the marketplace and uh, in the minds of a reading computer, it was thought that this is another format, like the trade paperback. You have a hardcover edition of a book, you have a trade paperback edition, then comes the ebook. And uh, very, very soon, we started to have a certain uh, observations that indicated it is not so much about format, it is really uh, something about new ways of reading. And that is why. The catchphrase in that picture from the Leipzig Book Fair in Germany of two years ago, which is a great readers' event, was for me the catchphrase for that um, for that presentation. Uh, in that we said we want to look into digital consumer books across many different ways. It's ebooks. It's also audiobooks. They behave differently. Because you can download them like a purchase, you can subscribe to, uh, to access a site, you can lend uh, the ebooks or the audiobooks in uh, a library, 
and also institutions can stream them to you. So these are very different models and as we will see throughout my presentation, they result in very different behaviors and patterns of consumers. Why do we want to understand these complexities and why did we take up the burden of making that barometer which is a way to really uh, crunch through mountains of data? Well, there are three main points. Number one, we want to identify the fundamental dynamics between the volume, so the number of copies or the number of units being read or listened to by audiobooks, and the income for publishers. That's two different categories, as we will see very shortly. The second thing is, we understand that there are very different audiences, and that is very important because for a publisher or a retailer or a reader, uh, we need to be specific about digital books because these different groups of audiences uh, have different um, uh, preferences, different ways of reading. And so if you want successfully uh, to reach out to them, you better try to understand it. So what we are doing in the barometer is to look into these specifics by pricing, because pricing is the main um, um, uh, main parameter of, of shaping the market into genre categories because we find out that different genres have different audiences, have different pricing suite points. We look into comparisons between markets and formats and distribution models. And we also, at the end of my presentation, will see a few first uh, tentative approaches to the impact of the COVID. Um, in uh, order to do this, we produce, as I said, we digest lots of data, which result in graphics like this one. Here we have all the countries, except uh, French Canada for some technical reasons, uh, and try by price point from almost um, uh, three books at uh, 0 0.1 cent or one euro on the left side to uh, 20 euro on the right side of these um, columns. And you see a comparison above uh, on the number of units sold by country and below on the revenue generated from these um, um, units sold. And that shows you that the different colors, meaning the different countries, have very different uh, sweet points, like uh, the orange, which is very high at the very low cost uh, end. Uh, this is Mexico. But you also see uh, in the case of Italy or uh, of Germany and Spain that you have in the 8 to 10 euro range um, massive income generated, uh, which is uh, displayed in the, in the lower column, because you have different audiences who say, okay, I'm prepared even for a digital book to pay, to buy, uh, to pay it, uh, 10 euros or 8 euros. So let's get more deeper into that and uh, look into one case, the German speaking market. Again, on the upper side, half of the, of the slide, we have the volume. So how many copies have been uh, downloaded and on the lower half of the chart we have the revenue generated in the german speaking countries and we have data here coming from two different aggregators bookwire and readbox so we have a more representative um, selection of titles and you see two things basically when you look at the value the revenue side on the lower half and that is number one you have declining income in the very, very low price ranges, so below three, four euros. But uh, you also see that we keep very strong presence at that magical, slightly under 10 euro threshold. This is where publish publishers can earn decent money from ebooks, despite all the flattening out of the market. Uh, that is totally different in a country like Italy, where by 10 euros, that is basically the end of uh, 
the maximum that you can uh, think of if you want to really commercialize your ebooks and not just get exposure for them. So this is a very tough lesson for all publishers who, like in, in, in Germany, uh, try to sell ebooks at 15, 18, even 20 euros, because when now the economic crisis is going to confront consumers with harder choices on how to spend their money, even in the more affluent markets, perhaps you will have to debate what is the price that consumers, even in the hard times, will be prepared to spend on a digital book. And in Italy or in Spain, where the economy, uh, economy, economy has uh, uh, been much more gruesome already for the past 10 years, that debate will most likely accelerate. Here you have the same picture for Spain. I don't go here into all the details. This is why you have the possibility in a few days to download that parameter free of charge uh, and really go into it with your marketing team, with your management team, in order to understand all those uh, things that you may want to consider in building your digital strategy in the next year or two, uh, two or three years. Now, in my opening, I said, well, the, uh, the consumption of ebooks is much more specific than in uh, paper books, by genre, for instance. Here, we broke out the same data that we have seen before by genre category. And just when you, without paying attention to the detail, when you see each color represents one genre category, you see that uh, depending on the price, the, se uh, the selling price, uh, you have sweet spots which are very, very different between different genres. The blue, uh, the, the, the green peak at the very left end of both graphics uh, is for fantasy and science fiction. So the consumers, the readers of fantasy and science fiction are not prepared to spend a lot of money. Similar to romance, that is something that we knew already. But if you look, uh, and, and uh, the, the, the readers of general fiction, of uh, thrillers, are prepared to spend quite a bit more money. However, when you look at the dotted red li uh, line, which is uh, representing the average, you see between the left graphic, uh, which is 2019, and the right graphic, the, the right figure, which is the first quarter of 2020, you start to see that in the higher price ranges, it's getting a little bit more tricky. That may be, and cautious, but it may be the first indicators that things are starting to shift when in March, at the end of the quarter, the COVID crisis started to impact uh, the, the behavior of the consumer. Um, you see also again, and that is a, an exercise which I really uh, can only encourage in your understanding of your market, to always make that comparison between the volume, so how many copies you bring to the consumer, and the value that you generate. Because even when uh, I go back to the volume, on the left-hand side, you have big peaks in the volume that does not translate automatically into big revenue uh, for um, your publishing company. So you need, in order to make it viable commercially, you need to really be specific and learn how to um, focus your marketing strategy and your sales strategy, etc., and that is getting even more challenging. But there are also additional opportunities when you add, as we will see in a few minutes, uh, not only download sales but also streaming, library lending, etc. That can all make a more um, uh, meaningful and more beneficial environment for your entire activity. Uh, 
I show you the same for Italy, where you see again a few much more prominent peaks in the lower price ranges. This comes, for instance, the rose um, peaks on, on the left hand side. This comes from Roman. Uh, but you also see in Italy, and I ask you to keep that in mind for later, we see ebooks in the classical sense of downloading an ebook and paying for it one copy at a, at a, at a, at a, at a purchase. Uh, we speak ebooks equaling very few genre categories. And it looks like this is going to change very, very, in very, very interesting ways with streaming, audiobooks, etc. But let's go back. I promised the audiobooks now. To, let's go back to the German speaking countries, which are a little bit more de uh, documented in more detail than the other markets. And uh, remember, we have these peaks, like in Italy or in Spain, for a few genres, when it's about selling, uh, selling ebooks. Uh, we see suddenly when you go when we uh, switch to audiobook, you, uh, we see, for instance, by the dark blue peaks in the ranges between six, seven, eight euros per downloaded ebook, children and young adult books more prominently coming in. They played absolutely no role whatsoever in traditional ebooks. Audiobooks have different audiences. Children are one very important audience because, uh, and, but, and that is reinforced, as we will see, by uh, the fact when people are staying at home and are not in school, uh, parents have ambitions to occupy their, their kids, but also they want to do something good for their kids, so they provide them audiobooks. Uh, so suddenly, um, Something new in terms of opportunity comes into the play, but when you think that you can sell audiobooks uh, for children and young adults at 20, 22, 24 euros, well, then you will be mistaken because uh, when you see at the first quarter 2020 on the right hand side, the most prominent children and young adult pie, uh, peak here is in the range of seven to eight euros. And then it's falling down. To, um, in, in, it's uh, the, the 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 income is, is is declining very rapidly in the higher price ranges. So you need to produce target to a new audience, which was not digital so far. But you need to get the price right, the pricing right, because otherwise you will not um, uh, result um, uh, have the the. Um, the aspired uh, income that you wanted to generate. Now, one very big debate that, in my understanding, is uh, not addressed sufficiently, not in print books and even less in, in uh, digital books, is the question of the share of bestsellers. In any normal traditional publishing company, uh, all the marketing, euros, pesos, uh, dollars, go into a few top blockbuster titles, which are the most risky titles, in the assumption that this is where the music plays. And uh, in fact, I did some studies uh, on print books in Germany. It turns out that the share of revenue and of volume uh, of the top segment in the bestsellers is declining very, very um, significantly and continuously over the past decades, and similar things starting to be visible in the digital realm. Uh, here we see, for instance, uh, in audio streaming um, for Germany, Austria, Switzerland, that um, in many categories, the share of bestsellers is declining. And here we see, when we go into more details, more details than I can present here, uh, that we have even a gap that in ebooks the share of, uh, of bestsellers is increasing. But guess what? In audiobooks, and particularly in streamed audiobooks, 
that is declining. So suddenly uh, you can earn more and you can reach out to audiences more prominently by betting on your best uh, backlist. So it is lots of opportunities, but opportunities which you need to address. So keep in mind that basic idea of streaming being different from download sales. Now, next market I want to highlight very, very briefly is the French-speaking Canada. This is a very interesting hybrid market because it's, it's North America, so it has much of the uh, US patterns of consumption on the one hand, but by being French, by being Canadian, it also has much of the cultural appeal and diversity that we are familiar with from Europe. And <clears throat> we see here uh, that suddenly, uh, at first in 2019, in uh, ebooks in Canada, uh, the share of ebooks, uh, of, of, of uh, bestsellers, the blue and the red um, uh, stripes, has been not very prominent. Less than 40% of the top 1,000 titles downloaded as digital ebooks have been in the top 100 bestsellers. But that dramatically shifted in the first quarter of 2020 when suddenly everyone wanted to go into ebooks, that might be an impact of the COVID-19 crisis. And suddenly, the, the really interest, uh, relevant titles were coming from the best-selling segment. So something interesting is shifting. We see the same also in the general fiction path. And we need to pay attention, which we will do in uh, one month when we have more solid data on the first quarter for the first month of, uh, of 2020. And we see similar indicators, the, the red dotted line is the absolute volume of um, sold ebooks by download in French speaking Canada in the first, in the first um, uh, quarter of, of 2020, where suddenly by the end of February, something is happening. I'm not sure that can be a data error as well, because we don't have complete data for the last few months. That is only in the making, but we may want to pay attention because suddenly two things happen in the last two months since early March. One is digital sales, as one would have expected, have been increasing very strongly, but as you see in that cha a chart from Canada, uh, by volume, it is the volume in the very, very low cost segments that are increasing dramatically, and that is not continuing in the higher price ranges. So we saw this from other first uh, snapshots also, all across the place in many markets, the COVID-19 crisis had an imminent and instantaneous impact on, e uh, on digital sales across the board, but we don't know what is really going to happen. Uh, first indicators have it that that is going into the low cost, but not the more quality ebooks and audiobooks. And second indicator is we have no idea if that are lasting effects, if, the, uh, if that shift is a long term that really consumer habits uh, um, are shifting, or if this is more instantaneous and returning to normal within a few months. Nevertheless, we, don't, we are not sure, but we have a few assumptions for the moment. For me, my main, my main slogan my main, um, uh, one, uh, my, my main elevator pitch kind of statement is, we assume that the impact from COVID-19 will not bring entirely new developments, but it will accelerate pre-virus trends with great force. 
And that means we have hybrid users who are switching between genres, between formats, between streaming and lending and buying, between print and digital. We see much more competition between the different offers and formats and channels for the attention and the budget of the consumer. And expectedly, the competition between the small and the big players, between the core book actors, publishers, booksellers, and the new entrants, platforms, whatever, that will become much more relevant. These are, again, I warn you, preliminary incomplete figures from Bookwire on uh, German-speaking countries. Um, and the blue dotted line uh, highlights the two, um, the two months of the lockdown period from mid-March to mid-April uh, to, to, to early May um, in Germany. And we see that um, there is an increase overall, but that is going down a little bit higher, maintains a higher level than uh, before the crisis, but is not really um, uh, making a, a lasting impact of high proportions. But in the lower part, you see that that is also varying uh, between the different genre categories like children, education, and fiction. The real news comes from that. Um, the blue line, here, again, you have highlighted the period between week 11 and week 19 of the lockdown in Germany. The orange uh, line is the audiobook downloads, and the purple line is the streaming audiobook. And you see the downloaded audiobooks have a very, very instantaneous peak when the lockdown starts. Everyone gets their provision for the lockdown days in downloading audiobooks. And then it falls off and never comes back. Totally different is the pattern of streaming, where people tap into that, get a new um, routine and that lasts and that continues to grow. It may come back a little, but it seems at first glance to be much more stable. And that might be a very relevant insight that uh, everyone in the industry may want to understand better, back up with more data, which we will do, and see if that represents a more lasting shift in the habits of consumers to access audiobooks and perhaps also ebooks. Uh, it fits some patterns that we know from streaming TV, uh, and that might be very, very relevant because it presents new opportunities but also new challenges uh, to publishers and retailers because not everyone is in a position to take advantage of them. That was a very, I'm, I'm sorry if I really gave you an overload of details. There are more details, but you can privately and more casually consume them in a team session when you have the downloaded global uh, consumer book, uh, not global, the, the consume, digital consumer book parameter. You, can, you will find it in a week uh, under www.global-ebook.com. Uh, you can download it free of charge. And keep in mind, what holds all this together is we love reading. It's not about format. It's not about this or that. It's about people who want to read, and you want to cater to those people. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Rudiger. It was really, really, really interesting presentation. I now will come to the questions. And the first one is, what's your opinion regarding the future evolution of the eBooks single copy sales versus the subscription platforms? Um, 
<laughs> that's, uh, that's the hardest question. You may want to add, and when is virtual reality come into existence as well? And a few more things. And, and, and the travel to Mars. Um, we have, personally, I have been expecting to, uh, for subscription services to pick up for quite a few years. That was at first absolutely incorrect. I was wrong, dead wrong. Now, for a few years, we see that some services with uh, content for very specific audiences, like Romans, in services like Kindle Unlimited, have really gained tractions and they have turnover. I, I, I believe um, Amazon, when they tell me, um, that is significant. Uh, I'm not so sure about the ebook, precisely ebooks, uh, if that is picking up in subscription. Something might even um, be be difficult uh, for the for the for the, uh, for the future. But for audiobooks, we see very strong indicators that streaming and subscription and lending is building up as a very popular way. So you do you think that uh, the two business models are able to coexist? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, okay. That's what I meant by the hybrid thing. Um, and uh, I've been told uh, without uh, given, uh, be given a permission to quote it, but by really insightful people, they told me what we expect is that people, as a routine, will be more and more hybrid, meaning following all kinds of offers, not only books and readings and audiobooks, but also having hybrid mixes between TV series, games, etc. So that is my main expectation. Thank you. Uh, there was also a question on the last data that were presented in Italy and Spain during the last week. Uh, that reported on a big increase on the ebook uh, purchase. Uh, but I think that you already answered uh, the question that was referring to the consolidation of the situation for the future. Uh, you, you talked about um, acceleration of ten trends, previous trends, previous to the lockdown. Is that right? Uh, for instance, <clears throat> um... I have been warning or arguing about a mounting pressure on price for quite some time in digital. And uh, all the first indicators that I see right now from the last couple of months indicate downloads of ebooks and of audiobooks and streams are increasing, compensating for lost print. But at the same time, it goes to the low price segment and not to the publisher's ideal price segment. So that is a trend that I've seen for some time and which I expect to be very accelerated. And particularly in Spain and Italy, we must, must also be aware uh, your two countries have been hit hard by the 20, uh, 20, uh, 2008 crisis. And the market has come down by a, more than a third in Spain uh, until a couple of years ago, three years ago. Uh, and now the second knock follows. That is going to be a very tough situation. Yeah. Um, um, there is another one. Uh, do you think that the growing figures on the audiobook sector are representing a substitute for the ebooks, or are both com complementary? I don't believe in two substitutes. Uh, each time, there, there seems to be like a golden rule in media, more broadly, that substitution is not really a correct uh, metaphor. It's always warping, sh reshaping. Uh, media consumption seems to be like water, yeah? flowing many ways, changing fast but also going, uh, always going into one direction, which is from just one, uh, one media uh, into different little streams, which are more specialized and more segmented. 
And the last one, do you believe that the COVID-19 situation is pressing and will continue to press price downs, prices down in ebooks and audiobooks as a result of an economic situation, but also as a demand from the public to publishers to give back to the community? Uh, I I would expect I don't think that the the audience thinks so much about publishers. They think they would rather think about their retailers because that's their m first. Um, um, interaction with yeah, they interact uh, with a bookseller, and even if they buy on Amazon, it's a bookseller. They don't interact directly with the publisher, so they would rather expect, in my expectation, um, uh, that the, the the retailers, their their contact people, do something to be nice to them, and that has. A consequence which is it accelerates the um, competition between the big organizations, the mid sized organizations, and the small ones. The small ones, the, the shop around the corner, they can be nice easily because they just put up a smiling face and, and are more compassionate, and they are compassionate already, and they interact on a very personal level. The big ones, like Amazon, but those other big ones, can do something similar, driven by their big data. So they and I know, for instance, that Amazon is doing this very, very strongly since the start of the of the COVID crisis, pushing books and among the books, pushing children books, uh, young adult books, more prominently. And that is a way to react. In that say, uh, in that sense, giving back to the audience, the mid-sized chain retailers, with the high cost, with the very costly presence in the city center, uh, with the thinner margin, um, with the bigger logistics problem, they are caught in the middle, and I guess for them it's not very easy to do this. Yeah, I think I, I may I add that I think that your uh, information on the German speaking uh, countries during the lockdown is is uh, really, really interesting. I think that opened my eyes in some ways. And I think that we should look uh, thoroughly uh, this information uh, in order to make some predictions for the future. I think it's very, very, very important. Um, I'm uh, can I just add? Uh... We are rolling out now. This was the first presentation of the barometer. I literally uh, was doing Excel charts until the day before yesterday. Uh, we will have it uploaded uh, for download in a week. Uh, we will do a first update in early July, where also certainly uh, on some Spanish language data, uh, we, will can we will be able to be more precise about uh, the, the the current shift, and then we want to do uh, a second update after the summer in early fall to review that again because I get, I expect that will be a very um, fluent situation and uh, hopefully and and every feedback is very welcome because it is very granular and we have to pay attention to many factors so uh, any uh, any any feedback is. Even feedback on, on mistakes, on, 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 on I have one, one last thing that I want to mention. When we really tried to understand details on the data, it turned out very rapidly that uh, often a big underpinning trend like COVID-19 produced a peak when it coincided with a marketing campaign of a retailer or of a publisher, or when for a specific uh, children title, a big movie promotional campaign coincided, then it was boom. Yeah. So the the, the volatility of these digital segments seems to be enormous, 
which is an opportunity. Yeah? Uh, but you need to be very precise when you do what in terms of marketing. And that requires strategic preparation in order to catch the bird when you can do so. Sure. Okay. And um, thank you very much, Rodrigo. Uh, we will. We are looking forward to see you in the Casa Electoral Auditorium the next year, and as 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 we we did uh, every year. And uh, I think that uh, we will keep in touch following the new data because this year is really interesting for us, for all the people that are studying and trying to understand uh, what is happening with the behaviors and, and the markets. Thank you very much. Ever so thank you. Thank you both for the invitation and also for the great support because without the support, which is also continued for all the years, we couldn't do this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.